we are at Two Lights Tour Waterfall today at Tower of Malaysia. It's not a one hour drive from my view. It's a unique place, a uh, rainforest, and the waterfall is just behind me. And uh, also, trees around, um, um, birds, uh, definitely not animals, uh, uh, but trees. Uh, anyway, so uh, we will make a description about the uh, volume of distribution. That's the thing I got here, and so on, no other birds. So we now correlate with waterfall that that behind us makes us one more distribution of like in the body. Now you can see the waterfall here. Definitely here there are three components here. One is the top component that water starts flowing. Then there's a slope, and then what we see is a uh, kind of lower level that you see when you uh, see that water flowing down. That lowermost point of this waterfall. Now what's so unique about this place is that the volume of water that is up here is not the same as volume of water that is coming down. The reason being, the reason being, some of the water on, when it's flowing onto the flow gets distributed within the lake. Some of the water can go into the slick soil, some of the water can um, you know, go up in the air, in the particles and I can feel the moisture the sweating. That's because of all water contained nearby and that's going up into there. So some minute quantities of water is getting distributed and that's the reason that I was talking about. So what is up there is definitely not down there. The volume is changing. The volume is decreased when it reaches the lower ground of the water. Very unique. Okay. So now we start discussing these things with the kind of uh, with, uh, with volume distribution. Volume when you inject blood up here, yeah, inject the intravenous blood into the bloodstream. I think this has a bloodstream, the waterfall is a bloodstream, and uh, uh, this waterfall even has an uh, artery or a vein. When I just inject any kind of blood here, and the drug starts flowing through the water or flowing through the blood, it is going to get distributed. It is going to get distributed from the vascular compartment to the exterior to the So there is going to be a decline in the blood levels of the blood. So why it should happen has various reasons. That will come in a minute. So but what is important is that when you change the medium, that means you inject a drug within the body, the vascular compartment, the blood is going to uh, the drug is going to go out of the vascular compartment because it's not a water type compartment. For a water type compartment that is remain there. It is going to flow out and the blood levels and blood levels of the blood are going to go down as what is the distribution of water in this drop. Guys, I'm back from the waterfall and I'm uh, again in my studio. Um, and now let's discuss volume distribution in a much more detailed way. Now you as you can see on the screen there's a graph. Um, the graph which is plotted for the plasma concentration of the drugs against the hours after injecting it into the intravascular compartment. Now what you need to look through is the sharp decline, the initial sharp decline that is seen in that yellow line up there. Now this decline in plasma concentration of the drug is basically due to the volume of distribution of the drugs. Okay. Now it's not that all drugs will have equal volume of distribution. Some drugs have higher volume of distribution, some drugs have lower volume of distribution. Whatever might be the case, there are reasons why a drug should have a higher or a lower value. Now looking at those reasons, the first thing that comes to my mind is about lipid solubility. More the lipid soluble drug, more is the volume of distribution. And less the lipid soluble drug, less is the volume of distribution. So, antibiotics like streptomycin, gentamicin are lipid insoluble, so they have a low volume of distribution. The next thing is about binding of drugs, okay, binding of drugs to plasma proteins. Now, you all know that drugs are bound to plasma proteins whenever they are flowing through the intravascular compartment. More the binding, less is the volume of distribution. Okay, more the binding, less is the volume of distribution. So drugs, oral anticoagulants like warfarin okay, uh, have very high oral protein binding capacity like 95% plus so the volume of distribution is very low in these kind of drugs. The third thing is sequestration of the drugs within the tissue. 
more the sequestration of the drugs within the tissue, more is the volume of distribution. Because drug is getting out of the vascular compartment into the body. So more the drug in the body, less is the plasma concentration of the drug. But in other words, more is the volume of distribution. So examples would be drugs like cardiovascular drugs like toxin, which have having uh, a larger volume of distribution. Now certain pathological states, you know, conditions especially affecting the heart, like in cases of congestive cardiac failure or renal problems, you know, uh, renal failures or liver problems, you know, uh, kind of cirrhosis examples could be cirrhosis of the liver and so on. Now all these processes. Um, have to deal with the volume of distribution. So people suffering from these diseases, the volume of distribution of the drugs to change. The reason being, you know, the, there's sometimes there's more amount of water within the body compartments. There's dearrangement of the water levels within the body. Sometimes, you know, the protein uh, synthesis is, uh, is, is hampered at some point. So gives rise to less of proteins within the intraoscular compartment. Sometimes the membrane permeability is okay. The water has to go out of the vascular compartments to the periphery. So, if any disease is affecting the membrane permeability, it can have a problem. There are certain transporter, transporters, you know, they transport the drug from one side to other side. So, if they might get dearranged in some of these diseases of the heart, kidneys, and the liver, and ultimately affect the distribution of the drugs within the body. The fourth thing would be ionization of the drug. You know, uh, at a particular pH, the drug might have a particular charge on them and if the drug molecule is having a charge, it's difficult for them to pass through the pores because, the, uh, because it, it, just, it just restricts the charge molecules to go out. Okay? So any kind of ionization of the drug molecules at any stage can give rise to uh, problems with the volume of distribution of the drugs. Uh, that was in general about what can cause a higher or a lower uh, values of volume of distribution. But there's something else. We need to talk about redistribution of the drugs. So redistribution of the drugs is slightly uh, a different phenomena. It deals with highly lipid soluble drugs. So drugs which are uh, high in their lipid solubility. Okay, and um, uh, if those drugs are given to the patients. Uh, what happens is that some organs in the body are comparatively more perfused as blood perfused as compared to the other organs. So organs like you know kidneys, heart, brain, uh, these are the organs which are having very very good blood supply. So usually these drugs will get accumulated or distributed within this uh, uh, organs at first, but later on, later on as they are lipid soluble drugs. Their concentration will fall within these organs and they will try to reach more bulky tissues like the fat cells and so on. Okay, so there is an uptrend where they go and distribute themselves in the organs with high perfusion. But later on, but later on, they tend to go and settle themselves within the fat tissues of the body and some other bulky uh, tissues of the body. So this is kind of a redistribution of the drugs. So examples would be anesthetic drugs like thiopentone, highly liquid soluble drugs. You get this kind of a result. You get a, this kind of a result where you get those drugs getting into highly perfused organs at first time. But later on, these drugs and go and hit the organs which are bulky in nature. Now that was in general about redistribution, volume of distribution and about uh, uh, factors which affect volume of distribution. But uh, going beyond that, we need to know something more about volume of distribution and that's about uh, the formula uh, for calculating the volume of distribution of the drugs. Now for that, you should first understand that we consider, we consider body as a kind of a uh, single compartment like this uh, bucket here. Okay? It's a single compartment. There's no compartment inside the single compartment which is full of water, which is full of water. Okay, so it's a single system, single compartment, full of water. That is what we mean when we say it's a single compartment. Now, if I'm injecting a drug, if I'm injecting a drug in the water that's there in this bucket, 
actually the drug should get distributed equally the drug should get distributed equally it should reach all the corners of the bucket in equal quantities in equal quantities now that will happen because it's a single compartment body it's a single compartment issue but but in other terms if we consider body in place of this bucket it is slightly because body is something which is a multi-compartmental system. We have compartments within the body. These are not steel compartments. These are compartments like intravascular compartment, extravascular compartment. Extravascular again divided into intracellular, extracellular, so many tissues, bones, fascia of the body and so on. So these are all compartments and there is some uh, problem for the fluid to go from one side to the other side. They have to pass through the fences before they reach to the other side. So these are compart multi-compartmental body models. Okay? So drug doesn't get equally distributed across all the compartments of the body. If it would have been like a bucket, it was very easy. It was very easy. But since body is a multi-compartmental system, it becomes quite difficult, difficult for the drug to get equally distributed in all the compartments of the body and apparent volume of distribution of drug as a formula of uh, total drug administered in the body divided by the plasma concentration okay so total drug administered in the body divided by the plasma concentration and this value which comes into practice now is what we call it as apparent volume of distribution I hope you got whatever I wanted to say. I really enjoyed the trip to um, uh, Waterfall. I hope I will be going across to many more places to explain things to you. Uh, do keep watching. Do subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye.